Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to be reviewing the worst AMD FX processor ever released, the FX4100. So to give you a brief history of the FX lineup, when it was released, the performance was lackluster at best. The single core performance was lacking quite a bit and due to the modular design and Windows scheduling, the multi-core performance was lacking quite a bit as well. Later Windows would fix the scheduling issue, but by then the damage had already been done. And to give you guys a better idea of how the module design works in contrast to a traditional CPU core, essentially you have one floating point unit that is divided between two CPU cores. Meaning that on our FX4100 we have two full cores and two partial cores. To look at it another way, it's kind of like a mechanical hyperthreading, although None of this is really mechanical, it's just at the hardware level as opposed to the software level. Another way to look at it is kind of like a motorcycle with a sidecar. Yes, the sidecar serves a purpose, but it ain't going to make you go any faster. Now AMD tried to combat their low IPC with a much higher clock speed, but that didn't really yield the results they were desiring. One good thing about the FX lineup is they all have unlocked multipliers, which means you can overclock them quite easily. Unfortunately, on the 8000 series, even with a 120mm AIO, you hit a brick wall quite fast with your voltage. In my experience, even with a 240mm AIO liquid cooler, at 1.4 volts, you are hitting a thermal wall, which will drastically limit your overclocking capabilities. This is where the FX4100 kind of starts to shine. Since it has half the cores of the FX8000 series, even with some mild air cooling, you can pump up your voltage and achieve really good clock speeds. You're just sacrificing potentially 50% of your performance. The FX4100 comes in at a stock clock of 3.6 GHz with a 3.8 GHz turbo. Now in overclocking, I did kind of go a little bit overboard on the supporting hardware with a 240mm AIO liquid cooler and a Crosshair 5 formula motherboard. We were able to achieve a 4.6 GHz overclock at 1.5 volts, which is a 1 GHz overclock over its base frequency. Now I know the cooling seems to be a bit overkill, but even under a Prime95 stress test at 1.5 volts, we never exceeded 38 degrees Celsius, which is 22 degrees lower than its TJ Maxx. This just goes to show that you can push the 4000 series quite hard without needing really exotic cooling. For our benchmarking, we paired it with an R9 290X, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and we put all of our settings to low on the graphic details so we can simulate a CPU bottleneck. So there it is, the FX4100 didn't perform quite as bad as I was expecting, but there are some things you need to take into consideration. First, we never exceeded 60 frames per second in any of our tests, even after overclocking. Second, this is a best case scenario, we weren't running any background programs. And while background programs may not seem like a big deal on a modern CPU, on an FX processor with only two modules, you're quickly going to start using up that CPU utilization that is desperately needed for our games. All in all, 
This CPU is a really hard sell in 2021 for any sort of gaming. There are much better options for a similar or lower price that you should go with instead. However, there is a small silver lining to this chip. If you just forget about gaming altogether for a moment and think about tweaking and having fun overclocking, this might be a really good way to go. You don't need an expensive motherboard, you don't need exotic cooling, and there are so many different things you can do to tweak and get the most performance out of this chip. Just don't expect it to be anything more than something to tinker with. In conclusion, it is not a good chip for gaming. Just forget about it for that reason. But for tweaking, I know I'm gonna have fun with it well past the creation and benchmarks of this video, and maybe if you guys watch our live streams on Saturdays, you'll get to see it again in the future. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech-tested merch. Also, we have mugs. Mm. Oh, it's dirty.